I'm Alexa Carr Doctor. Welcome back to another diagnostic video, guys. Today's patient is a 2015 Ford Taurus. Very nice looking car. It has the 3.5 in it, I do believe. The V6 3.5. I like this engine. I give it my stamp of approval. Really? Customer, yes, this engine is pretty good. You would uh, recommend somebody buy this? Yes, but put them, uh, 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 uh what's that? Uh, the money you save, uh, what you call it? A car fund. Emergency. <laughs> Emergency fund. Because if that water pump go, it's going to cost you about 15 to 2 grand. Where is it? Um, oh, it's timing built driven. You're not going to, time and chain driven. Not going to be a good customer seat. complaint on this particular vehicle. Um, he can't pass emissions. Yes, in the state of Georgia, we have to have emissions in certain counties. Um, I'm pretty sure he's in the county that has the emissions. You have to get the emission test. And if you can't get the emissions, you can't drive your vehicle. You get pulled over and get your car impounded. The check engine light is on. In the state of Georgia, that's an automatic failure. They do hook it up to a machine. So we gotta get to the bottom of what's going on. Um, I'm gonna give it a quick start and we're gonna look at the mileage and check for light. All right. Uh-oh, it's the music queen. Got a tire warning light, we're not worried about that. And the check engine light is right here. And the mileage is 127,000 miles. So, seems like a lot of problems for 127,000 miles. Um, let's go ahead and pull up the codes. Now, I've already diagnosed this car, but I thought it'd be a good process for you guys to learn something. So I'm redoing it for you. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. <laughs> Um, put the codes already and we have both catalytic converter codes are throwing um, current. This P1450 code, I'm going to come back to that one because we need to look into that one. And we have P2196, P2198. Both uh, oxygen sensors are stuck in the rich position. Um, that's all. I mean, rich is basically the car is getting reading too much fuel and not enough air lean is the complete opposite not enough fuel and too much air so i go back to this one because this is like an evap code unable to bleed up fuel tank what does that mean you may ask every modern day car has uh, an evaporative system and i'm assuming the tank is not holding vacuum. Um, it's not pressurizing up, lead up. He did mention his car have trouble. Um, his car has trouble starting up when you put fuel in it too. I'm gonna get back to that as well. And look, Here's he got question. a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. You're fine. All right, so. With that being said, um, the key thing, I did actually get a short on this. If your vehicle is not starting up after you put gas in it. But the first thing I'm going to check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got you, buddy. We're going to give you a call. We're going to keep you posted every step of the way. <laughs> All right. So the first thing I like to do is look at my readouts. And show you a little bit about that. All right. I like to look at my fuel trims. This is a V6, so it's going to have bank one and bank two um so i'm gonna run those to the top already i see the fuel trims are too high for my liking um this normally indicates a lean condition um six and seven it's supposed to be well under five and then a negative and we're at ten uh so i'm gonna go straight to the problem um because that's what i did when i diagnosed this thing i was like hmm I think I know what it is. So, on this particular car, the purge valve is located right here, right on top. And on my short video, I showed myself pulling this little clip out. This line is going straight to the fuel tank. Now, you can't get this mixed up with the fuel line. You don't want to make a mistake and pull off the fuel line while the car is running. Uh, Evap purge line is normally uh, identified by green. So you have a green right here. If you follow it, you have another green right here. Um, where you will be, it'll have like a little green um, 
tire and strutter valve thing, what you can hook up a, a tool to it and smoke the tip system. So if you follow the lines, you should see something like this. Now red, you don't want to touch this one. As you can see, it's indicated a red, meaning fuel, danger. <laughs> so yeah. So we gotta make sure we're pulling off the correct line here. So we're gonna pull that off and it's pulling vacuum, but that can simply mean the computer is opening up this valve. So we're gonna unplug it. In the unplugged position, it should be naturally closed and it's still pulling vacuum. You can hear that, can you? Now, with my finger over the plug, let's look at my fuel trims. Let's let it, um, let it equalize a little bit because I was just playing with it. And I guess it's gonna stay in the sevens. It's not supposed to be that much negative. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming normal. So we're just adding a whole bunch of fuel. When it's negative too high, like 10 and five, five, say over five, I mean, it's adding a lot of fuel and it's gonna throw a rich situation. So now we're stabilizing. This is what I like to see, negative two, and it's gonna probably jump up to uh, positive five, no, positive two or three. So that's perfect. All right, I'm gonna shut this car off and explain the treatment plan I'm gonna get for this vehicle. I don't know what's wrong with my eye today, guys. You always oh. have allergies and you don't take your medicine. Yes, I'm being the- You are my medicine. Come on, baby. Come on, let me give you some. Yeah, I, oh, I, I forgot we filmed it. <laughs> my bad, my bad. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. All right. So I spoke with the customer, gave him the rundown, the same rundown I'm giving you guys. And um, talked with him a bit. And I was trying to get to this catalytic converter situation. Because um, when I looked at the cats, they look like cheap cats. And normally cheap cats don't last that long. Uh, but let me rewind a little bit. Dealing with the codes, the four other codes you saw. Remember I said I was gonna focus on that fuel tank code. Mm -hmm. Bleeding up high, can't, unable to bleed up. But we had four other codes, two cats and two oxygen sensor codes. Um, this line injects fuel vapors into the engine to be burnt. When the um, car is moving, the tank is sloshing around fuel, which will increase fuel vapors and you will get an increase of fuel vapors causing too much, basically too much gas. And that will throw off your catalytic converter and that will throw off your um, oxygen sensors. So that's why it's reading rich. <laughs> I would like to add that any other shop would have probably looked at those codes and sold him cats, oxygen sensors, and whatever else. Yeah, and You definitely. didn't need all of that, you know. Not doing the proper diagnostic or have the proper knowledge to look at this thing. Like, wait a minute. This one code can knock those other codes on. Um, but in the past, I don't remember it ever knocking on a calendar converter code. But it's possible here. Um, the calendar converter still may be messed up. But we want to, I want to get this fixed first. Now, moving back to the point I was gonna make before I had to back up. Spoke with the customer, he explained to me he had to replace the cats every year since he had this vehicle. Uh, vehicle has low miles. This goes back to maintenance guys and education pretty much because I asked him, I was like, well, when was your last tune up? And he was like, basically I, I've never had a tune up on this car since I've had it. A tune up, is directly related, I mean, it would directly affect the catalytic converters. If your spark plugs are not doing their job, it will not burn all the fuel and send a lot of unburnt stuff down the gas, uh, not the gas, but the exhaust system, and the catalytic converters can't filter that out for simple terms. Yes, it gets more technical than that, but I'm gonna just say filter. Catalytic converter is just a filter, pretty much. Those original cats probably were good. Uh, the original shop, whoever he brought this car to, should have performed a tune-up and performed a fuel induction service. I uh, explained to him, your modern day engine is kind of dirty. Um, it will take things like 
gas vapors, which is not dirty, but this is just an example, and reroute it to the engine to be burnt. It had, it does have a dirty crankcase system that will pull up crankcase vapors and reroute that into the engine. Now that's pretty dirty. That can get your engine dirty. And that's what that fuel induction system will go in and clean all that stuff up. Okay. So hopefully you guys are still following me. I hopefully I explained <laughs> it very well. Good, good information. Hopefully they didn't fat for cool. it through. Um, I know they like to hear the pricing. So we, I wrote up the quote and I told the gentleman just to replace this valve here plus the diagnostic he was looking at 247 dollars if if his budget was tight mm -hmm. and he wanted to get back just get emission pass but i also quoted him for the maintenance item and he decided to get everything done um honesty always wins yeah he's, and, a, he's a first time customer so we really want to make a good impression and my diagnostic is time uh people always i made a controversial video and they was like oh most shops include that and da 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 da, da. Mm -hmm. i can't get back my time and knowledge man right. it, you know it took me years to get to where i am and that has cost me money you know i gotta pass it over to you guys i'm sorry and a diagnostic fee well parts are ordered on the way uh when they get here we'll cut back in and you actually making the repairs yep 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 so we're gonna show y'all both today because y'all asked for it <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll be right back Alrighty, good people. Got my spark plugs. I'm using Motocraft because Motocraft goes in Ford. Should be six of these. Uh, I guess I go ahead and open them up. Ooh, unboxing. Look at that. Ford. Motocraft getting fancy. They didn't used to put the Ford logo on the plugs. <laughs> yeah. Now, some people like to use NSCs. Eh, I don't. Um, I think NSCs really came into play when you was working on cast iron, cast iron heads. But this is aluminum. Aluminum is much softer and never really give an issue, unlike the cast iron. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start removing my little knickknack hoses and this is a little clip that you just pull up and push over and it should just come right out same for this i'll give you a close-up in a bit let's see here hopefully you can see that but it's a little lock so you have to pull over and like so yeah because if Sometimes you just can't push straight forward. Down, over. Hopefully you saw that. And remember, I already unclipped this earlier. And I'm gonna try to get it out of its brace points. Now it's time for the intake. I'm gonna unplug my mass airflow sensor if I can. I can't see the clip, so. We about to learn together. But I got a trick for that because I can't see the clip. They thought it was a bright idea to put it at the bottom. So I'm going to take my eight millimeter or flathead screwdriver. This should just pull right up. Undo this. Undo two glue clamps. Flip it over. Now I can see my clip. Voila. Should have just worked blind. I'm normally pretty good at it. <laughs> now, I am waiting on my upper intake plenum gasket because anytime you, uh oh, I'm dropping stuff. No, I bet that was important too. Anytime you replace, take up a gasket, you have to, anytime you take up a part, it's a great idea to replace it, the gasket because um, you don't want nothing to leak. Sometimes you can upset the gasket if you take it up and don't replace it. Let me look for that piece. I found it. <clears throat> Way over here. Right. Yeah, it's a lot, a little hardware. All right, 
The next thing I'm gonna do is remove my throttle body and push it off to the side because, uh, no, I don't, I'm, I'm gonna leave it on this one. And the reason being, it doesn't have any um, coolant passages going to it. Most of the time, these throttle body have coolant lines going through them. And instead of undoing the hot coolant, cause this system is still pressurized, it's gonna have to wait and spilling coolant everywhere. I just unbolt the throttle body, sit it off to the side while I move the intake. Now, um, may not be necessary, but I'm gonna remove it to make my job easier. This strut bar right here. The strut bar keeps the body rigid. Um, when you're going around curves, the, you won't have, have a body flex. So that's what that's for. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and put this together. Some assembly required, right? If I can keep up with my parts. And it looks like, okay. So you have a thicker end and a shallow end. And it looks like the shallow end goes at the bottom. So like so, loop. And this piece just, oh my God. Come on, Alex. I got butterfingers this morning. So, shallow piece go at the bottom. Yeah. They didn't even put the gasket on for me. <laughs> All right. So, nothing else. Now, it's different ridges. I got two ridges here. I'm not sure which ridge the gasket fit on. So, Maybe two gaskets, one, two, but I only gave me one. I figured it out once I take the part off. I'll do that now. Okay, just has one gasket. Bam. And you should be able to, you shouldn't be able to blow through this, but since this part is defective, I'm going to be able to blow through it. No good. All right, carrying on. These are my coolant lines. I don't want to touch those. So I'm gonna try to work around it. Um, like I mentioned, I'm gonna remove this strut bar so I can get to this back here a lot easier versus struggling with it. That's not the move. Um, while I'm at it, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this. This is a vacuum source. Looks like for the uh, the brake booster. So, clamp that down, move that out the way. Give it a little persuasion. Voila. All right. And these should be eight. Well, no, I'm moving ahead of myself. Uh, I may be able to not mess with this strut bar. Let's see what happens. Uh, I may be able to undo this and pull it forward. Um, but sometimes on these intake manifolds, especially these plastic ones, they like to put brace bars in the very back. But I don't think this one have them. Sometimes I can reach back there and feel them. Um, but I don't feel anything. So I'm going to try it and see what happens. Um, but before I do that, um, what I like to do, if you can not required is to blow the debris from the intake that way when I move it no debris won't fall down in the engine don't want that all right so I'll be right back all right got my air nozzle close your ears good people this may get a little loud Now, I do that on fuel tanks as well. Um, when I get ready to remove a fuel tank, um, I drop the fuel tank down and I just blow off the area because I don't want dirt and debris 
getting in my tank once I remove the pump assembly. Now the torque specs for these are 10 newton, two, 10 newton meters or, or 89 inch pounds. Very important that we torque this stuff down. And what I'm doing, if I haven't said it, is getting to the, the three spark plugs that's back here. I can easily access these. Some mechanics, what they'll do, they'll sell you a tune-up and just do the first three plugs. Um, dang, I can't keep my saliva in my mouth. <laughs> uh, they'll sell you the first three plugs. Well, they'll just do the first three plugs and not do the rear because they don't want to take off the intake manifold, which is ripping the customer off and it's not cool. And there's a bracket back here, like I thought. Nope, it's just right here, and it's a, it's a. Um, let me let me take you and show you what's going on. It is. Let's see. Come on, I can't get the camera angle right. Right there, straight ahead. I'm gonna see. Can I point to it? My flashlight to. Right there. That's the. 10, 8, I have to take a loose to, in order to pull it off. I knew it was something else holding it. Most difficult part about the whole job is setting the camera up. Cool. Let me give you a little wide angle. There we go. Wide angle action. Hopefully this does the trick. Did the trick. Hey, sweetie. Yes. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, here to get the Red Avenger. Red. Oh, Can yeah. I'm supposed down. to be pulling that down. Okay. Let me just move this intake. And got to do this. This is a crankcase. Voila. Now I can pull this out the way. And I'm about to leave the area, so I'm gonna cover up my intake runners. And have to go do some chores, so I'll be right back. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is just take up my coils. I'm not going to I didn't think I had to. So, quick tip. If you pull up these coils and they saturate in the oil, you need to replace your valve cover gasket tube seals. So, you need to be on the lookout for oil. And get this one for some odd reason. Nice and dry. That's what you want to see. Hate these security locks. <clears throat> All right. 
Got my spark plug socket on the extension. Make sure I'm going the right way. Now it's okay to buzz these out with electric tools, but it's not okay to tighten them down with electric tools. And as you see, my tool is not holding, holding the, pulling out the spark plugs. I'm going to show you a trick in a little bit. Make sure y'all still can see me. Take a coil, stick it down in there. Voila. <laughs> and looking up looking at this plug very closely, the gap has increased, meaning it has some wear on it. So who knows when the last time this plug been replaced? Uh. I can't get that one for some odd reason. Yeah, these clubs are the original. And they're hot, by the way. <laughs> Voila. All right. Now, with these plugs, they come pre-gapped already. That's why I had like a, a protection over it. So what I like to do is very gently guide the spark plugs in the hole. I just don't throw them in there. I do this motion right here. If it's a wall, I just simply, boom. You throw them in there, you can risk closing up that gap and have misfire problems we don't want that then i take the tool and just hand thread them up very important now i'm not saying don't use any kind of anti-seize if you want that's completely up to you. Now, if I had some, I would use some dielectric grease and put in the coils. But I'm all out. No big deal. It's just something that I like to do. Just like someone out there likes to use a pound of anisees on the spark plugs. <laughs> Won't hurt anything. It's just, you know. Sometimes we're accustomed to stuff. So let me find my ratchet. Got my ratchet. I didn't grab a very long bar because these plugs don't take much torque. Um, I didn't look up the torque set. I normally never do. But you want, let's see, wrist tight, I'll say. You don't want it too tight because you can strip out these spark plug threads. So you have a major problem on your hands. Another thing to notate. Sometimes spark plugs have uh, washers, like a crush washer on them. This one don't, so you're just going to feel a solid tightening. You know it's gonna tighten up solid but the ones that has washers crush washers 
you're gonna feel it's gonna feel weird it's gonna feel like you're crushing something so you're just gonna go until it feels nice and snug with your wrist all right now it's time for the coils you can miss and match these all you want it's no big deal they're all the same now I normally recommend uh, changing out the coils but on this particular one I don't do four coils that much uh, not saying that they don't go bad but I don't do them that much so I didn't find a need to replace the coils um, at least the bare the, the bare minimum the three coils that's in the rear let's see wrap my ratchet again you want to tighten this stuff by hand and these are eight millimeters so you're going to kind of want to do two fingers tight using this finger as a guide to keep it on there and I'm tightening with these two fingers. Voila. And if you notice, I'm real far up on the wrench. I don't want to be back here. You over torque it. Now these is just techniques you can use. Of course, there's torque specs for this stuff, but you don't have to go crazy torquing down every little thing. Um, some people do, but on the norm, it's not realistic. That's not what technicians do on a daily basis. Critical components like intakes and cam cap bolts, yeah. but I don't look at this as a critical comp component. Valve cover gaskets, yeah. Anything dealing with like seals that can possibly leak. Torque it down so you can get some even clamping force. for my intake gasket if I can open it. <laughs> so found Alex weakness. Now this is for the throttle body. I didn't remove the throttle body so I didn't upset the gasket. So I'm just going to replace the plenum. Simply just seat down in there like so, nice and easy. Don't want to get my crankcase holes. Got to give my surface a little white but it didn't look that dirty to be honest with you but i'm gonna still wipe it down because that's normally what i do Get rid of a couple of these just to hold it in place this bugaboo back here because it's not in place and it's lifting up the intake in the rear
supposing to be a pain. Now with the rest of these, I'm just gonna run up with my ratchet. Mm. Then we'll come back with the torque wrench. I'm doing a crisscross like pattern to make sure everything sit down nice and even. time. Make sure it say inch pounds, guys. You don't want foot pounds. So, 10 newton meters or 89 inch pounds. Now, you don't have to torque this, but uh, I'm gonna torque it for kicks and giggles. And it's probably gonna be about the same, 10 newton meters. All right. And everything should just plug right up your hoses back in their respective places. And I got a feeling that this goes under. Let's see. Nope. <laughs> I had it right, right, right the first time. Back up, squeeze it, push out. Looks like this goes over. That's naturally so. Let me fix that. Now, this was a coolant line. Always make sure there's no pressure on the system when you're opening up lines, like I did. Uh, this car has been sitting for a good little minute now, so I knew it when 
I knew it wasn't any pressure on these lines. All right. What I was trying to do there is disengage the lock. It had locked in the open position. Supposed to make it easier on you, but kind of made it harder for me. <laughs> All right. So I'm just checking back over everything because sometimes my hands move quicker than my eyes. So yeah, it's just the intake. It looks like a job well done. Now what I'm gonna do is crank the vehicle back up and erase all the codes and check my fuel trims again. We're gonna look back over the scan tool to make sure our numbers are good. All right, let's see. Let's move all this up to the top. I let it warm up a little bit, uh, reach operating temperatures so I can see engine cooling temperature 190 so I can get a correct reading. Um, and we're looking good. It bounced up to like three, and it should go back down to like zero. So, yeah, there we go. So, those numbers are looking real good. That's what I want to see on my fuel trims, both bank one and bank two. Um, I've already took the liberty of test driving it, and I can hear the purge valve too. That's probably why my numbers was a little high at first. The purge valve is actually working. I can feel it pulsating, letting um, uh, fuel vapors inside the engine to be burnt. So all is well. And this also will test for vacuum leaks too. If that number is high, like it was before, you have a vacuum leak. So that looks like a job well done. But guys, I hope you didn't enjoyed that video and learned something because that's always the goal right now i'm getting ready to pull this thing around so the customer can come get it until next time love you like always make sure you like and subscribe show support alex the car doctor